Welcome to the greenhouse. I built it years ago and at one point it was useful. Over time, it's become a graveyard for plants and old garden projects. So let's head in. Oh yeah, it's bad. Please don't tell anyone how I live. Kinda embarrassing, but this isn't a video about the mess. I know it's a disaster, but we don't have time for that right now. This is about reviving the greenhouse and automating things with the hydroponic system that I've designed with materials I had on hand. I'll use this metal trough. Right now it's full of trash, rust, and regret. I can keep that last one, but I'll have to deal with the rust before filling this with water. I also scrounged up some PVC downspout, some 2x4s, a pump, and a bunch of 3D printed parts. Let's get started. Alright, to flesh out this idea, I'm going to start with a sketch. This helps me work out the details and visualize the necessary components and how they fit together. I start with the trough and then add supports for the system to rest on, before sketching the downspout, grow channels, and the tubes that will supply water. Once I'm satisfied with that, I do one more sketch from a side view, envisioning how the water will circulate. That's good enough. Now I'll solidify these plans with ink. I find that even when they turn out bad, the act of sketching something out really helps my thought process. If you're not familiar, this type of hydroponic system is called NFT. Not that one. It stands for Nutrient Film Technique. Here's how it works. A small water pump sends nutrient-rich water from the reservoir up to the top of these channels. The water flows in a thin film along the bottom, just enough to touch the roots of the plants. They get all the nutrients they need without drowning. Gravity then pulls the water back down into the reservoir where it's recirculated again. It's simple, efficient, and I can't forget to water it. You may have noticed those PVC downspouts had holes drilled in them already. That's because I've done this before. Back in 2019 when I got my first 3D printer, I attempted something similar. It was one of my first practical prints. Only back then I had no experience or understanding about the strengths and weaknesses of FDM 3D printing. I designed these thin and flimsy loops to hang the tubes and printed it from PLA. Needless to say, things didn't hold up and the whole thing was scrapped shortly after. This potato quality photo of a Pacific tree frog is all that remains of the setup. Anyway, I'm back in Fusion, ready to learn from my mistakes. I recorded roughly three hours of poking and prodding while I figured out what I wanted. I'll spare you guys that experience and skip to the good stuff. Okay, so this is what I finally came up with. All parts are based on measurements and modeled to scale. Looks pretty close to the sketch. And if we get rid of the trough and 2x4s, we can see the system much better with all of the 3D printed parts. We've got the manifold splitting the pump's single outlet into four outlets. We've got caps that deliver the water to the tubes. These were also designed to be printed without supports. On the inside, there's a nozzle to diffuse the spray. There's the brackets that attach the tubes to their support. And of course, the net pots. I designed these to be printed upside down with no supports. In the model, I leave the bottom of the pot solid and use modifier blocks to change the settings so that it prints with zero top or bottom layers and 25% grid infill pattern. This allows the infill mesh to act as the bottom once printed. So now that the design is done, let's get to printing. All parts were produced on the rat rig V-Core 3 with the oldest and wettest roll of PETG I could find. There's some stringing, but a quick hit with the torch fixed those right up. Mm -hmm. 
While the printer handles business, I can get started cleaning up the trough. I previously used this as a chicken brooder, which led to the corrosion we're seeing inside. First, I get rid of the debris, and then follow up with the orbital sander. I'm just trying to remove some of the oxidation on the surface. If I leave it, the rust will continue and eventually make holes. Once it's cleaned up, I'll add a protective coating of non-toxic two-part epoxy. I mask a line near the top where I want the coating to end for a nice clean edge, and then slop on the epoxy with a roller. Nice. Get this thing back in. Okay. Now to get this thing filled up with water. I fill the trough with water and leave it another 24 hours to ensure there are no leaks. Then it's time to prep the 2x4 supports. To accommodate a 2 degree slope, I rip one of the supports down to 2 inches. Both supports get a small notch to seat snugly on the trough. and then a quick coat of white paint. Finally, I cut the square tubes to size. Once this is done, I'll be ready to assemble the system. All right, I don't know how well this is coming across, but this is one of the, one of the very first original pieces and it's still hung, you know, hanging there, but you can see it's starting to fray. It's really, really brittle. One of these, uh, oh, he snapped that whole, that whole hanging point. Yeah, it's just a week. Weak piece, poorly designed part. This shit's weak, Lizzie. Okay, now what we're ready to do is get all these pieces in there, get them attached and hook everything up. Let's go. Assembly at last. I started by laying out all of the parts and marking the supports to get everything evenly spaced before dropping in the pump. It's afternoon by now, and things have really heated up in the greenhouse, leading to my camera overheating. 
Oh well, this work montage was probably long enough. The final step of assembly is connecting the water pipes. The plastic tubing was a bit more rigid than I thought, but everything was going great. Until it wasn't. Before I could even turn it on to test, I had found the biggest flaw in the whole design. The barbed connector for the inlet had been printed vertically, making it incredibly weak along its layer lines. I really should have known better. Well, the other three tubes are fine. Let's take a look inside and see how they're doing. Inside, we can see the nozzle is doing a great job diffusing the stream of water and creating a nice even flow. And even though the connector broke, water is still flowing, just at a lower volume. I'll be revising that part and forging ahead with an update video in a few weeks. All right, so did I revive the greenhouse? I don't think so, not yet. But we're definitely on a good path, I think. Some, some clear design shortcomings. I think I need to revive that, or revise that pick piece and use, instead of putting the barb on the inside of the tube, it should be on the outside. That way I can make the uh, make the 3D printed piece as chunky and robust as it needs to be. So uh, I've got a little bit of work to do there, but otherwise the system works uh, very well and I think this is going to be a successful iteration. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you've made it this far, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'm Roman for Diaz Creative Studio. Thanks for watching. See you next week.